Happy holidays, everybody. Welcome back to our show. Hola y aloha. As you know, we're the voice for the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce here in Hawaii. I'm Barbara DeLuca, president and co-founder, and I'm so excited. Today's guest is Ana Valdez. She's the president and CEO of the Latino Donor Collaborative. Today's episode, we'll be discussing Latinos in America and the new mainstream economy. So welcome to our show, Ana. Thank you for joining us from New York. Thank you so much, Barbara. I'm really excited. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. Why don't you tell us a little bit about um, what is the Latino Donor Collaborative? I'd love that. Okay. So you know, we are a think tank. Uh, we're a nonprofit think tank. And what we do is create data mm -hmm. about the Latino contributions in the United States. And it's basically economic. But we also go, you know, through media and consumption and upward mobility and all those variables that tell you the, not only the, the, uh, the uh, situation today of Latinos, but the trends, what to expect, where do we come from in terms of economic contributions, et cetera. So the reason why this organization was created in 2010 was that the founders um, so a big gap between the perception of who Latinos are right. and the reality of who Latinos are. So that's why we exist. I love it. And, and it, um, it's helpful to, you know, um, address some of those misunderstandings because, uh, you know, a lot of people assume that we are um, field workers or, or don't speak English, you know. Um, so, so why don't we go over some of the things that, that the report can dispel some of those myths. Well, you're absolutely right. You know, we, um, I'm, I'm going to be extreme, but on the, t on the terms of the perception, people, especially people in the middle, you know, in the Midwest, et cetera, that have never seen Latinos in person, they have a perception that Latinos are, you know, the sombrero, recent arrivals, very served, um, you know, sometimes lazy, unfortunately, which that one has nothing to do with our reality. Um, right. You know, sometimes we're immigrants and sometimes we're recent arrivals. But we're not lazy. We've never been lazy. We're not lazy in our countries um, where we came from, not here. So um, some of those, or, or that if you are not completely underserved, you have something to do with crime, right? Narcos, oh, et cetera. So that's the myth, which is completely unreal. And then there's a the reality. So Latinos are actually driving, com the, driving the economic growth in the United States, not only the demographic growth, but also the economic growth. And let me give you a number so that you understand how much we're driving the, uh, geo, you know, the uh, demographic growth. In mm -hmm. 1970, Latinos were 9% of the population. Oh. By 2023, we're almost 20%. So today we're one out of every five Americans in this country. And the reason why people perceive us as recent arrivals all the time, not only because well, I am a recent arrival, I'm an immigrant. But, you know, 70% of Latinos have been here, not only one, but sometimes two, three, four, 20 generations. Yeah. Most of them, actually, the border crossed them. They didn't cross the border. This is true. I'm a fifth generation Latina. Um, there you go. American. My great, great grandmother is from Sonora, Mexico. And yeah, she, she was born and Perfect raised example. in Arizona. Yes. Perfect. Absolutely. And, and so because we there was this humongous wave of immigration from 1980 to 2007. Mm -hmm. Then people perceive us all like that, but, it, but, but we're not. Most of us have been here for the longest time left, like your family, Barbara. Right, right. Yeah, so um, right now you, you mentioned we're one in five Latino is, um, um, one in five American is Latino. So I read somewhere that by 2060, it's gonna be one in four, is that correct? Yes, and, but you know what? It's so funny because you're right. That's the projection, but I'm going to give you a number that will probably sound more of a real projection, actually not a, not more, a good tool to make a better projection than that, because you're right. That's the projection that sometimes, um, you know, like the census or the Pew, in, the Pew Institute manages. But today, according to the U.S. census, one out of every, so 30% of the newborns in the United States are Latino newborns. Yeah. Well, that so tells me. Yeah. yeah. So that tells me that much closer than 2060 will be 30% of the population, right? 
Yeah, we, that's what um, I've read all over the place. But so the generation Zoomers, the Zoomers. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have the youngest generation um, uh, of Zoomers, which is our, our medium age is 15 or, or 25. I, I've read two different yeah. numbers. The, the most populated age of Latinos is 13 years old. Okay. And the most populated age of non-Latinos in America is 62. Wow, that's a huge gap, right? So no. we we have so much like you know longer to to grow our our wealth you know gap. So um, like let's talk about the real estate industry. I'm a, I'm a broker here in Hawaii, and I, I read that we have seventy percent of home ownership is Latino. What what does that mean? Well, it's interesting because first of all, let me just finish that uh, part of the youth. Imagine sure. that if our average age is thirteen. Okay. Then we haven't even, we're not even close to peaking. Right. Because we will peak when the majority of our workforce, of our uh, population is in the workforce actively. But today, the majority of our population is not even in, um, in, in the working age. So right. imagine our power once we actually integrate, right? And especially with the numbers that I'm going to give you of educational attainment and the upward mobility. And as you're saying, going perfect to segue to your industry, you know, it's not that we are 70% of the homes are ours, but 70% of the growth mm -hmm. of new homes in the next 30 years will come from us. So imagine that if, um, you know, if today, I don't know, today is, I think it's 62% of all the new homes in the last three years have been bought by Latinos. But in the next 30 years, more than 55% of the new homes will be bought by us. That's, that's so exciting. I have Zoomers as a mother. And um, this, that whole generation, you know, we're, they're graduating at um, higher levels from college, entering the workforce, making more you know, money, entering the C-suites, you name it. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, we, we kept saying, and actually this year with ASU, we were able to bring out why and from where are we really growing so much economically, right? Mm -hmm. And so I want to tell you so many numbers about that. But, you know, we were able to, um, to, to di dissect what it was. And for two years, every time we do the Latino GDP report, we were seeing that education was one of the most important aspects. So this year, we partner with the Society of Latino Engineers. The acronym is SHIP, and we did a report about engineers in the United States. And this number kind of summarizes everything, although the report is incredible. Every time we got together to analyze this report, literally we cried because to see these kids in numbers and the, what they're going through, their challenges, their, uh, their successes, their perseverance is incredible. So in this report, I would say that one of the most important numbers was, you know, in 2010, um, engineers that were Latinos in schools, like um, out of the 100% of the students of engineering, 4% were Latinos. That was in 2010. Okay. By 2021, almost 18% of the cute. students of engineering are Latinos. Uh huh. Why? Why the interest in engineering? I'm curious and tech. Well, that's a really good question. We actually we tried to actually go into other professions, but the ones and I hate that this sounds like an advertising for ship. But okay. the organization, the organization of of um, of the profession that was more prepared to do this kind of deep report were them. They have eighteen thousand members. They have a very close communication with each one of them. Um, of course, massive, but really close. Like these kids really rely on SHIP. And so we were able to get to them really easy. We did surveys and we did all kinds of things. And, uh, and we got this information. And of course, they have a great relationship also with schools, which, you know, were another source of our report. So that's why we concentrated in engineering. And we are assuming that, with some variations, the numbers in each one of the professions are the same. 
Correct, correct. Yeah. Let's talk about the new mainstream economy. $3.2 trillion is what we contribute to the national GDP. And that, that surpasses India, United Kingdom, France. Exactly. And you know what's really interesting? That not only, so this is the sixth report, as I said. So when we started measuring it six years ago, the GDP of Latinos was 1.7 trillion. Now it's 3.2. It's almost the double, Barbara. Mm -hmm. And so imagine, so it was only six years. The population grew like 17%, but we grew almost the double in our contributions economically. Just to give you a dimension, $3.2 trillion of GDP would make us, U.S. Latinos, the fifth largest economy in the world. So it, the first one is the United States. The second one is China today. The right. third one, Japan. The fourth is Germany. The fifth would be Latinos in the United States. We're not counting Latin America. Right, right. Latinos in the United States. Above, you know, France and German, I'm sorry, France and Russia and Brazil and Canada and all kinds of countries. We would be the fifth largest economy. And you know what's great is, as we mentioned, our um, medium age is lower. So we have a, a growth cohort within the United States, with, which is the Latinos. Exactly. Do you know what? We, we have calculated that without Latinos, the United States GDP now wouldn't be the number one because we are contributing so much. And remember, everything is in a lot of different ways. We could go back to birth rate, right? The annual birth rate is negative today. Yes, and I saw that. At latitude, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're really bringing the growth, not only because demographically we're bringing the growth, but also because of all this other, like we said, right? Youth and uh, purchasing power and, uh, you know, upward mobility and, um, uh, the, the, what we said, like home buying, which for us is wealth building, right? Wealth is in a lot of different ways in our community, buying a home is building legacy wealth. And for us, that's incredibly important because we, we usually rely less on credit. And right. so when we get a house, that means we have the money to buy a house. Correct. Yep. And we, and, you know, historically we relied less on credit because we have just borrowed from family and, you know, we're entrepreneurs by spirit and that that's the pros and the cons, right? Because we are um, opening and starting businesses at a higher rate, yet we only have 1% of capital that's, you know, um, put into our economy. Absolutely. So two years ago, we did a report with Bain Capital mm -hmm. and what we found was exactly what you just said. So when, um, when whites get, uh, 46% of the times they get credit from a bank, Latinos get credit only 25% of the times they, and then all the way to VCs, venture capital, they get 25% of the times capital, and we only get less than 1% of the time. So imagine we're opening businesses in record numbers. Correct. Imagine what the GDP would be if we actually got credit to grow them. And Bain calculated it for us. Oh, and if we did, the GDP would grow 1.2 trillion. That's amazing. Wow. So, so how do we change the narrative? So we believe that one of the most important aspects of, you know, we not getting credit, of we not getting representation on boards, of we not getting our representation that is fair and honest in media and all that, and, and our lack of Latinos in the C-suite, et cetera, it's perception, right? The subconscious or conscious bias is there. Mm -hmm. And so how do we change it? What we found, Barbara, is that media is the one promoting that stereotype, promoting that horrible fact that if we, people perceive that if we have some kind of, uh, you know, purchasing power, it's because we are associated with crime. Hmm. Okay. If not, we're underserved. Right. Let's give you a number from the census. Okay. According to the census, mm -hmm. 
16% of Latinos live in poverty in the United States. And that's really important. And we need to take care of them. But nobody talks about the fact that 84% don't live in poverty. Right. Yeah. And so nobody's telling that story, right? In Hollywood, you're, you're talking about Narcos, MCs, Queen of the South, all those, you know, shows that are very entertaining, but horribly stereotyping, or the person that came without anything and crossed the border and was killed, or the poor lady that is abused, or so all, it's these two extremes, and they are preserving that stereotype. So we do a report also, this is the sixth year that we do it, that is called Latinos in Media. And according to our report, we actually do a census of all the new shows in English and all the new movies in English. And according to our report, only 3.1% of the lead roles are Latinos. And the worst part is that half of them are negative. That's where the, the, the stereotype keeps being reinforced over and over, and over again. Right, right. Well, it's, it's shifting. Um, you know, with, with that, let's, let's talk about the, the voting block since we have, you know, my son is going to be 18 next year and, um, he's like, you know, talking about, he can't wait to vote. And, you know, um, I, I missed that part at latitude. So why don't you educate me on that? Absolutely. Well, you know, Latinos are, well, for, as I said, right, that big wave of immigration made at certain point, like in 1995, a, a big, uh, you know, block of our Latino population couldn't vote because they didn't have a citizenship yet. But now, with 90% of our young people being born in the United States, there's tremendous expectation for us to come out, exercise our voice through our vote, right. and show what we have in mind. Independently of which party you promote or what beliefs you have, it's important that we make our voice heard. Why? If not, we keep being ignored. Right, right. Like right. the sun. And, and, that's, and that's another thing, Barbara, that we are finding, and we're actually doing a really great report about Latino youth for next year. And Latin, so you'll see it there. Okay. Um, you know, my generation, first of all, we came to this country and we're grateful we also don't want to create too much, you know, trouble because, you know, we're new recent arrivals. That's the immigrant wave, right? Um, not your immigration, uh, not your wave, but like that part, right? We're, we're, we're more quiet. We are very loyal with brands. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, we're a very specific, kind of more, I would say, passive consumer. Wow. Well, in, you know, in, in purchasing, but also in voting and also in a lot of different ways, right? In our civil participation, civic participation. But what we're finding is that our youth, those Gen Zers, those Gen Alphas are so much more outspoken. They are extremely assertive. They, first of all, are American. Their first language is English. They've been translating for their parents over and over and over again. They're tired of his, their parents being, I don't want to say abused, but in a lot of different ways, ignored at best mm -hmm. um, or, you know, um, taken advantage at worst. They know they've earned their space wherever they go. Their parents did it for them, but they are doing it too. Because for example, as our report mentions, you know, they go through, depression and mental health issues and, you know, and sometimes homelessness, but they graduate and they show up in a suit to look for a job at Google and Meta and Procter and & Gamble and the banks, right? Yeah. And so they know they earn that space. They're not like us. They're not like me. I think you're much younger than me, but they're not like me. They are actually very assertive and they are not going to go with, you know, neither brands nor candidates, nor, you know, channels or media companies that don't represent them well. And we're documenting that so that before people start seeing fallouts in their branding, mm -hmm. start taking care of their marketing, their recruitment, their procurement, and all the other things that they have to be including us in. 
Oh, yeah, they're they're definitely out there doing their own research, making up their minds for themselves, have what they want to believe. And um, 31% of them are on TikTok. <laughs> I have to be on TikTok for business. So I'm learning from the Generation Zs, you know, wh what they think. So they don't just believe whatever they see on the news. They, want, they oh. think for themselves. Yeah, they're independent thinkers for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. And there are hope because they have a much better platform than we did. Um, and they, they know the, and you know what I love from the, I love this from, um, immigrant parents that this kids, that's why the only immigration movement that has prospered is the dreamers because these kids mm -hmm. know the sacrifices their parents did, right? They're going to make them worth and whatever it takes, they're going to speak out because they know their parents gave everything and they deserve everything. Yes, yes, they're gonna speak out because they're used to speaking up for their parents and filling out documents and forms for their parents. So they had to grow up real fast. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, I have a couple of quick facts for you for Hawaii. So I moved here in 1999 and the Latino population has grown 80% since 2000 to now. So right now we're 11% of the population. So if you, I know, so if you look at our, our census from um, 2020, we were at 1.4 and a half million across all the islands. And so 11% of that is equal to 160,000 Latinos. And I don't know why. Yeah, and I'm sorry. No, I was gonna ask you, I'm a humongous fan mm -hmm. of, um, of Magnum P.I. Mm, yes. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I haven't been in Hawaii for like 15 years, but I see uh, Jay Hernandez there and I'm like, he looks wood. He looks very good in Hawaii. You know? <laughs> there should be more Latinos there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I've seen restaurants and businesses just pop up all over the place. Actually, there's 722 Hispanic owned businesses um, in Hawaii and they employ 5,600 people and contribute 500 million to under 1 billion to our economy. So this is why we founded the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Hawaii. We want to, you know, reach out and, and form a, a community because on Oahu or um, across our islands, you know, we don't have neighborhoods. We, we're just kind of spread out everywhere, which I love too. It's, it's great. Um, and it's just so interesting how, how Latinos got here. It's a whole nother story. <laughs> I want to hear about it, but first I need to congratulate you. Because Barbara, it's needed. That chamber of commerce is needed. And um, all these numbers should help you grow it more because people have to be prepared, right? I mean, obviously Hawaii is independent and, and it's a state that is amazing, but, you know, tourism, right? And products that are being manufactured there and, you know, workforce, right? Um, you know, there's, there's so much interaction with California, and in California, you know, we're majority. Latinos are majority now, both in California and in New York. But I'm sorry, both in California and in Texas, we are majority Latinos. We're big. Uh, the population of Latinos is bigger than the Anglo population. And just FYI, in New York and in California today, one okay. every two babies being born are Latinos. So we want the California bro our brothers and sisters. So... You know, it's super important that Hawaii knows these numbers. Oh, definitely. And it, and it's communicating to corporate America, you know, the value of doing business with Latinos. Because in Hawaii, it, it, you know, 50% of the population is Asian, which is great. And that, you know, but that's where the banks and the corporate is, is focusing on that market. And we're the fastest growing demographic in Hawaii, too. So, you know, just communicating the numbers to them and, and um, having, you know, them, them understand that it's good business to do business with this. It's not, it's great for the community, but it's also good for their pocketbook. Exactly. And you know what, in your, in every industry in the world, um, in any, actually not in the world, but specifically in Hawaii, mm -hmm. if, if you don't do it, somebody else will. True. You True. better do it first. It's, a, it's such a small island. And it's great too, because if you see a niche and you fill it, you're going to succeed because nobody else is doing it here yet. So you, if you don't hurry up and get on it, somebody else will. You're right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the Latinos, how did they get to Hawaii? How did we get here? 
Um, in, in 1900, there was a about 5,000 Puerto Ricans were recruited from the sugar cane plantations in Puerto Rico because they had a, a hurricane. And so we recruited them and brought them over here, the whole families. And this is how the Puerto Ricans started growing in numbers. And there are about 52,000. And the Mexican population here is 53,000. So a majority of the Hispanics is Mexican and Puerto Rican here in Hawaii. Um, yeah. And the Mexican population is so interesting. So um, King Kamehameha, he was gifted some cattle. And um, he made a, a kapu, which is like a, a law, you know, to that they were sacred and not to kill the cattle. So they started growing in population and they didn't know, you know, they didn't want to kill the cattle. So they brought in the vaqueros from California to Hawaii to teach us how to cowboy, you know, and, and catch the cattle and wrangle them in. So um, that's how the Hispanic, the Mexican population got here was the vaqueros. And the Hawaiian word um, for cowboy is paniolo. So they're low. I love that. It's like the hanky, the handkerchief. Exactly. Right? Yes, yes, yes. It's so interesting. That's one of my my uh, my bones, you could say, with Hollywood, and I have many. But um, you know, all these new shows about vaqueros, and not a single Latino. When cowboys were invented by Latinos, right? Yeah. You know, the Yellowstone show and all these like blonde blue eyes, you know, vaqueros there. And I'm like, we made vaqueros. That's why all the names of vaqueros of cowboys are in Spanish. Not because they wanted to give us the privilege of that. It's because we invented vaqueros. All right. And yes, so there you go. You perfect ambassadors in your way. <laughs> I'm so glad you came on our show today. This is so exciting. We could talk forever. Um, it's, it's only a half hour show. So, you know, we got to end it somewhere. Uh, so is there anything you want to discuss before we... Um, well, yes, I want to say two things. One, it's two calls to action. One is, please go to our website, latinodonorcollaborative.org, download the information. It's free and share it. Use it, own it, put it in your DNA, and please use your voice to spread the word to your fellow Latinos, but also to the non-Latino, you know, uh, you know, community of yours and just spread the word. We need to make sure that people know who we really are. Yes. Yes. I went there. Is there um the what's the website? Latino donor collaborative dot org. Dot org. Got it. And it it should be on the screen. Um thank you so much, Anna, for joining us today for the so I know it's late there. I appreciate your time. This is so exciting. I can't wait to meet you in person um next year at Latitude. Looking you. forward to it, Barbara. Thank you for having me and thanks for everything you do. You're amazing. Thank you. And and that, we've been speaking today with Ana Valdez, also known as the Queen of Latino Facts. <laughs> um, this is Barbara DeLuca, your host of Hola y Aloha on Think Tech Hawaii. And thank you for joining us. Happy holidays, everybody. Um, aloha y adios. <laughs>